Thank you, everyone, for joining us on a new episode of Channel Orange. I'm your host, OK the Guy, the Didi Wobo. I'm here with Puffco Poppy himself. Now, Puffco, what are we puffing on today? Today, we actually were uh, trying some live resin from Alchemist. I got a grapefruit sour diesel. The thing had like 18% terps or something. Jesus Christ. So I had to had to jump on that. It's very, very good. It's got lots of mericine, lots of terpenoline. It's one of my favorite terp combinations. So shout out to Alchemist. They did that. It's one of the highest terp concentrations I've seen them concentrate here in Maryland. All right, shout out to Alchemist. As you can see, you can buy all this stuff at Jova Wellness. Now, let's begin. So, off top, we just got news yesterday that Avatar live action didn't get renewed for not just one season, but two seasons. Now, this caught me off guard because immediately it happened so quickly and they renewed them for two more seasons. Netflix has a track record of cutting shit off, even if it's good. So this kind of surprised me. And um, I look forward to it. I know the the fandom is divided. It's always divided because it's a fandom about, you know, what actually took place in the show and what they what they liked and what they disliked. But I liked it myself. You know, I liked it. I feel like it was well done. I feel like they didn't take too many liberties to completely, you know, destroy everything that was built with a perfect television show. So, I'm not shocked, but I am shocked that they announced it so early and it got such good reception. How do you feel? I am actually on the other side of the fandom. Like, I don't hate it, but I didn't love it. About halfway through the series, I just started to wonder, like, why am we doing this? Like, why are we doing this again? But worse with real people, even though, like I said, it is a good effort. So I don't want to slander the creative team, like the actors, like there was a lot to like about it. So I'm not going to be a hater. Um, the fact that it's going to get a chance to finish, maybe it'll improve. It'll, you know, take some lessons, improve its pacing. And, you know, I'll be optimistic. But will I tune in for all of it? Probably not. But hmm. it's um, it's cool for the fans that do want to see it finished. So uh, I'm not going to be too mad at it, but I was definitely on the other side of the fandom where I was a little bit more on the negative side on the live action by the time it was over, where it's like it just wasn't doing it for me. It just felt like a worse version of the story for people who don't respect animation as a medium because I just think they did it better. And I felt like it felt rushed. So the three seasons make sense, but it also has me a little worried because they rushed the first season. So Mm -hmm. there's more material in the second and third seasons to even get through. So. A little worried about the pacing of that they're going to have to speed run through Avatar and kind of hurt the quality more. But you know, for the fans who are enjoying it, I try not to be a hater. If that's what the the people wanted, I hope it just wasn't from people hate watching it and being curious that it got renewed. But if it's genuinely because people want it, let the people have it. I mean, it, it had to have a certain following, and they renewed it for not one season but two, like. That means that they have a lot more stuff to come in. Even the One Piece live action, they only got renewed for one more season. They didn't get renewed for two. And they only had, shit, that was a brick ago they announced they're going for another season. But that means something. That means that there are people who actually like it. And whatever Nielsen freaking record they, you know, base their, what shows are actually good, you know, it did something enough for them to renew it. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Uh, I'm just. I'm just. I'm just looking forward to seeing Toph, man. Yeah, Toph is one of my favorite characters too. So, like again, like I'll probably be curious enough to at least see what season two is hitting on, but not pressed to to see it through if it's kind of the same quality of season one. It was all right, but like, again, like there was parts that I did like about it. Let me ask you this: What kind of bender would you be? Ooh. Well, not water. I don't really have a good affinity for water, so definitely not water. So probably, I feel like I'd either be an earthbender or a firebender. I'd definitely go for earth. Yeah, one of those two. Because for real, for real, Toph is like one of the strongest characters in the whole entire show. 
she could just do anything. <laughs> like she metal band, uh, mineral bands. I mean, I don't know if she did sand. Did she do some sand? Mm -hmm. No, she ain't like the sand. But even still, like it's like one of the most versatile jumps. I would like the shoe lighting though. Yeah, that's cool. It could be Sasuke, you know what I'm saying? With the, the fire bending powers, that was always cool. But I don't know, I feel like with my temperament now as an adult, the being a Virgo or Earth sign, I'd probably be an Earth bender. Is that why I want to be an Earth bender? Because I'm an Earth sign too. Yeah, maybe that's part of it. I just feel like, you know, that's that's solid. And like I said, I could be Magneto. That's awesome. But I, I don't think I have an affinity for ground Pokemon. Oh, well, Garchomp. <laughs> I mean, Garchomp, Garchomp. Yeah, I'd definitely be an Earthbender, man. Um, yeah, I have, I have no use for. Um, damn, we didn't even regard Airbending. Fuck. Airbending's cool. It's just like the rarest one. You know, it's like Airbending's powerful. You know, I feel like I, I wouldn't want to do the Mangekio Sharingan thing and let you know one of my loved ones die so I could fly. But like that pure flight was cool. with it here? Yeah. Legend of Korra, like where you could just like fly, fly, not like the. Ang. He did that in the show. Yeah. Nigga flew. I was like, that shit caught me to fuck off guard in the first episode. This nigga just flew. Well, it looks like he was kind of doing the air push thing that Ang had done before, but it's like the the true flight where Zaheer was flying like Superman, where he's oh, just like, shit. he's just like I can fly, fly. But oh, that was that was a question I did have. Like in Legend of Korra, did they like evolve any of the powers? Yeah, that's where we get a lot more the we get a lot more metal bending and lava bending and just, I just love the the white lotus whatever that season was was here and his his gang of, of G's they were in that jam going hard the battles are crazy his girlfriend got her head exploded just spoilers it's old show but yeah. it's crazy my man was he he sucked the air out the lungs of the of the air. Uh, Whatever, um, print, uh, queen or whatever, just just some gangster shit, just a, a cold murder, just stuff mm -hmm. you wouldn't think of a, a air nomad to do, even though he wasn't an air nomad, he was a criminal who got air nomad powers. But Legend of Korra had its issues for sure. It wasn't perfect, but I think it gets a little too much hate. Well, me myself, I was I was I wasn't a fan of Legend of Korra, but the OG Avatar watched it like three times. So, where do we want to go from here? Where do we want to go from here? We want to talk some hoops. We can talk some hoops. Let's talk some hoopy hoops. All right. Who's the best player in the world? The best player in the world right now? Right now. LeBron James. <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Still? <laughs> Still the best player in the world. My thing is, Brad, I think LeBron James has been the best player in the league since he's been in the league. I don't understand what people, that that, that kind of, I don't want to wax poetic here, but that kind of takes away from the Jordan-LeBron argument because Jordan has always been the best player in the league when he was in the league, bar none. Now, I don't understand how niggas is better than LeBron in his own league because they're not really. Like, Le LeBron has been averaging 27 points for his entire career. 27, 8, and 8. That's not chump numbers. Of course you got Luka. He gets shit out of goddamn 30-point triple-double at, at a moment's notice. But he's a 6'8 point guard. And he gets doubled a lot. We get it. I don't want to say he's stat hunting, but we get it. You know what I'm saying? But I still think it's LeBron James. Now, if I had to take it off LeBron... I feel like the whole the whole Jokic shit, that's designer, bro. You know who the fuck the wrong. It's either LeBron or KD. I'm sorry. LeBron KD is stuff. I don't think Jokic is better than LeBron KD or stuff. It just I can't do it with him, bro. I I fuck with Jokic too, but it's it's, it's still KD. I saw KD bring his team back from down five points last night. In the clutch, like he's really like, I can't do it. I mean, until the nigga retire, I can't, I can't, I can't give it to Jokic. You know, I'm sorry, Jokic and the beat. No, I'm sorry. That's my rant for the day. I feel you. My blackness makes it hard for me to say it, but it's true, <laughs> man. Jokic is, is Jokic, man. He's the best player in the league. It, it's it pains me to say it. The the nigga in me, it, it pains to admit it. <coughs> 
Jokic is the best, most important player in the league. You take him off of Denver, Denver is a, a mid-ass team. But I am a hater, man. I'm a hater. Because could you believe that Kobe had to earn my respect back in the day? I was like, bro, I do not like Kobe. For some reason, I don't like him. He's an amazing scorer, but I don't like him. I was a Tracy fan. Yeah, that's a wild take. I was, I was a Tracy McGrady fan. That made the a little bit. I, 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 picked, I picked a side in the fight because they was, it. It was kind of like putting them against each other. I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely going to Tracy McGrady. What? He's a fucking 6'8 shooting guard. He do everything Kobe do. What the fuck are we talking about? Like, you know what I'm saying? But... Like, I think Jokic has to grow on some people. Especially if he's going to spit out MVP after MVP after MVP. Then that means nobody in the game. I mean, they're champs. Can't take nothing away from them. That's what um, I was watching Jeff T. podcast. Him and um, Udonis Haslam podcast. They did a joint jump. And they was talking about the greatest players ever. And they mentioned Kobe, you know, Kobe, LeBron, MJ, right? And Shaq, which a lot of people don't put Shaq in their top five, but they should. Um, they mentioned winning has a lot to do with the greatest of all time because a player can be great as fuck, but he don't make people better. And they mentioned Luka. Like, Luka is an amazing player, but does he make his team better? I don't think so. Then they mentioned Giannis championship run. Well, Giannis didn't have any, no, any dogs on him. Like, bro, he had one of the best perimeter defenders <laughs> of the last what decade. And Drew Holiday, he had Chris Middleton. He was averaging like 25, and he didn't get hurt. Like, Giannis, he made those players better. And Giannis is a fucking wrecking ball. So, at the end, at the end of Luca's career. We gonna see how we gonna it's gonna the number is gonna be funny to like when we at the end of the day if he don't win shit it's not necessarily like how do you feel about the argument between making the players better versus you just being an amazing player? I think this is the argument I get in with people like with the MB versus Jokic. This is why I think Jokic is so oh, yeah. valuable because he makes his teammates so much better. He makes Aaron Gordon. Right. All those just like the just players who are play with Aaron yeah Gordon. yeah the people who were on the garbage bin in the league or just traded around and couldn't find their niche. He's got Aaron Gordon. He's got Caldwell Pope. Yeah, KCP. He's he gets the most out of these players that were just regular role players and that they're just something else on Denver like Jokic versus Embiid, who is an amazing player to get buckets on his own, but. A lot of it involves his teammates just standing around watching him um, flop around. Yeah, he does flop around a lot. Does Jamal Murray have an all-star yet? No. (laughs) Jokic has never had an all-star teammate. That just goes to my point. Like, Jamal Murray is the best player this man's ever played with. Which is not, I mean, Jamal Murray's a great player, but like... Amazing player. Disrespected, but still, like... He might go down in NBA history as the most... Underrated player of all time. Maybe at this rate, because he's still, people just never remember him until the playoffs, and then it's like, oh shit, he's killing us. <laughs> like, yeah, he's, he's he's really good. And that, that's all you could ask for out of a number two. Average 25, stay healthy. That's it. But again, how valuable would Jamal Murray be on a different team? Because a lot of his value comes with his his chemistry Oof, he would with be the Jalen Brunson. <laughs> well, that's not bad. I mean, I don't think a lot of people would like to be Jalen Brunson, but. What I'm just saying, his synergy, that pick and roll with him and Jokic is still damn near unstoppable. Unstoppable. Now, like you said, you add the Aaron Gordon lob touch pass to that and KCP spotted up in the corner. That's still, what What the hell are you going to do about that? Bro, it's unstoppable. Like, when Jokic gets to that motherfucking top of the key and Aaron Gordon is in the other spot, you know what's going to happen. I've seen him do it. Like, three times in the last game I've seen him play. And it's unstoppable. Like, okay, I, I like Jokic. He's cool, man. Whatever. His man. his passing ability is like telepathic. Like, it's, it's like he throws passes that where it's just like it's no fucking way he saw. There's no way he saw that guy. Well, there's no way. It's no you don't. There's no way you knew that guy was cutting and the movement and he's just launching something behind his head while he's looking completely somewhere else or some like some weird touch pass or just 
And then when he needs to, he'll just drop 37 with some of the wildest, ugly, fadeaway buckets, old man, he YMCA makes, makes buckets in your face. He makes the shit out of <laughs> yeah. it. Crazy. Have Anthony Davis looking crazy. Then you're looking at his stat line like, oh, he's got 37, 19, and 16. What is this? Yeah, like, and you look <laughs> at the body of the person this? who did it, and it's just like, he looks like he's built like Greg Ostertag, and he just gave my Shouts team to work. Greg Ostertag. <laughs> Shouts to, uh, uh, <laughs> he used to all random fucking centers. <laughs> Robert Sacker. <laughs> <laughs> He's man just built like the most generic. He's built like Chris Kamen, but giving your team work. <laughs> Jason Smith. <laughs> Demon, uh, what is Demonis Montanunis? <laughs> Random centers from back in the day. But I feel like I got like a little bit of that get off my lawn in a situation where I'm like, the center got to get fucking 15 boards and at least three blocks. Well, he'll do that. Maybe not the three blocks, but again, like I think the, the knock against Jokic that I hear is like, oh, he's. He's a, a liability on defense. He's, he's not. Like, you don't have a championship-level defense with a doormat that you could just get to the rim on. Like, just well, with, he's not fuck. He's not the Kimbe Matumbo. Hell how no. do you do on a switch with Dame and Giannis? He's good because of his IQ. Just like on the other end, he knows where to be. He gets the deflections, and he can put his body in the way of the rim and stay out of foul trouble as a big man. Like, that's... Important to be able to at least get the stops. Because I thought he was going to run into the wall that uh, Clippers did with Zubac in the playoffs. You know, when the switch happens, you got Luka. And Luka, Jesus Christ, would tear that nigga Zubac up every single time. Every Look, single time. That's why you got four other defenders you can throw at them to keep, you know, you want to keep Jokic. I'm not saying, like I said, you don't want to put him in positions where he's going to be barbecue chicken. But... You know, they have a good defensive scheme there. And, like I said, Gordon, who can help off the weak side. And, you know, so yeah. they've got – they got – and also, you got to defend Jokic. Oh, he's barbecue chicken Jokic. Yeah. Then how, what are you going to do to stop him? Up, You're going to need a big in that jump to, to try to stop him. Or keep him off the board so you don't want him to have 20 rebounds. Mm-hmm. So, again, it, it's a chess match on both ends. And Jokic is functionally the point guard of the team. So, like, he is making all the decisions and distributing the ball and making – so it's like, I love Embiid. Embiid is a bucket, even though the flopping be blowing me because you're just too big to be needing to do all that. Like, you don't need to do that, dog. You're already good. Why are you – why are you Why are you doing that? Get up. Get up. <laughs> why are you on the ground so much in every game? Well, I feel like he falls back and stop from being hurt so much. It's But isn't you falling or risking being hurt more? Like, I don't know, man. Man will run into Ish Smith and just look like he got hit by a bazooka. And it's just like, bro, I need you to chill. You, you're flying around. I feel around. like he's one of those players that just, he's going to play hurt. He has no choice but to play hurt. Like, he's eternally hurt like Ben Simmons. And that's another argument I have to make. Like, a, a availability has to come into factor. It does. It does. That's the Jamal Murray problem. Like, he's not the most healthy guy. He had, He's for real, hasn't been the most healthy guy. He got injured uh, a couple nights ago, like some ankle shit. He came back in, but bruh, you're frail as shit. That, that's what keeps a lot of people out of being All-Stars, out of being MVP, out of being first team All-NBA. Availability. That's all it is. Ben Simmons is gone again. Jesus Christ. Pinch nerve in the back. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with this guy's back, but it's yeah. over for this guy. I'm sick of hearing, but I'm sick of saying this. Bruh, Every single, cause I got I got league pass right. I'm like, okay, fucking, uh, uh, Brooklyn's playing. Bet. Then you see Ben Simmons walk out there, smiling. He's always smiling, sitting on the bench. I'm sick of your fucking smirk, sitting on the bench. You're the most expensive bench player I've ever seen in my entire That's life. That's what I'm gonna say. I'd be smiling too if I was getting ready to just sit and watch the game every night. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Warriors got blasted the other night. It was sad. They're in a weird place right now. They're they're at the end of the dynasty. They're at the end of the road. I think they might have one more, maybe hurrah to maybe try to go with something. But it looks like they might have to. You know, Kaminga might be of their future. You know, might be really good. Yeah, it's like he might be the the foundational piece they move. Steph is like thirty five. Like it's it's time. Clay is already on the bench. He's already. Same. You know, Pods is already starting. It's looking. Draymond's looking slower out there a little bit. It just, you know, all dynasties must end. 
And it looks like this is finally the end of it. You got Chris Ball out there and shit. It doesn't make him look any younger yeah. out there. So, you know, they went for Chris Paul first, kind of like they knew that this is the end. It's kind of a one more year all in. They're a little too old. Maybe they, they just might be a little too too long in the tooth for it. So it's going to be interesting because it, Steph Curry feels like somebody who's going to be a warrior forever. Like, I don't I don't know if I could see him in another jersey. Mm. I feel like they'll do anything to keep him forever, kind of like on some Kobe type stuff. Mm. Where it's just like, you're the warrior and we need, you know... We're gonna keep you around for this, but they have to do some sort of rebuild eventually. Cause hey, man, he look good in Laker gold. Oh no, Lakers! Man, that's an old team, man. You got Steph and Bron. I mean, that'd be cool. Everybody's always wanted to see that. Well, Bron could just go to, but whatever. I don't. I, I, this is this. Uh, this is you know. Bruh, this ain't gonna happen. I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think they're gonna let that walk. I don't know. I mean, this, this is over, I mean, like, the future of the league is in good hands. Victor Wimbanyama is mm-hmm. looking just, everything is advertised, just completely amazing, just NBA created player, just running around the league now, just already looks like he could be an all-defensive team player as a rookie. Just, the other night, and he had, like, 25, 11, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, it's just, I've never seen so many numbers in my life. And it's so funny because this is the worst he's ever going to be. It's like, this is as bad as he's going to be. This is as terrible as this man. He's only going to get better. This is crazy. Like, this is not Imagine cool. Imagine what happens if they decide to, like, get him some teammates. Like, that'd be crazy. Yeah, they just go get him Trey Young. Trey Young, is, that's the natural piece. Is it Trey Young? Get him Trey. Get him out of, like, the, the Hawks are cooked. Trey Young. The Hawks are cooked. That's the rumor, bros. Trey, make the trade. Do it, pop. It's a weak draft class. Trade that number one or, you know, or top three pick that they're going to have. Yeah. Get that jump to Atlanta so they can rebuild because they ain't got shit going on. They're just stuck in basketball hell and mediocrity. So go ahead, Trey, you know what I'm saying? Give Trey a fresh start. Mm -hmm. Him and and Wimby, that's a nice little, that's a nice little something. That's a little Lobs, right you know what I'm saying? A little something, you know? Yeah, I like that. I like that. A, a like that. accurate passer who can get Wimby the ball in the spots that he needs the ball, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I see the vision. I see it. I see it. I like that. All right. Uh, what's next? Uh, I mean, I would ask you this, but it wouldn't be a good question. I didn't like. I mean, I'm biased, but some people said they would. They would. They would draft SGA over Zion. I'm like, I get it. I get it. I would. I, I mean, absolutely. I get it. Availability. I, I get it. I um, get it. Weight watch activity. I, I, I get it. <laughs> porn star horn, horniness. Like, if there's a way we can work in your contract, you got to stay at a specific weight <laughs> in order to get paid. Like, let's put that in the contract. SGA is arguably the best guard in the NBA right now. But Zion is Shaq times Charles Barkley. Zion is... Not good at rebounding and also not, not yet. on the court. But, well, he should be because he's huge and can he jump out the game. <laughs> so one with the averaging like five rebounds a game one or something, like this, six bro. rebounds a game. It's this. a little weird. It's a little weird. And also, like I said, the availability thing with Zion is just the issue for me. He's great. I mean, he's still great. I'm not saying not a valuable piece. I wouldn't want Zion, but like. If you can, like you said, if you can put some horniness checks in his uh, contract and some, you know. You know, keep that man. He has a pension for BBLs. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's his thing. But are you calling Zion Blake Griffin right now? Is that what you're doing? He's Blake Griffin ish. Blake Griffin averaged eight boards, though. Yeah, Blake was rebounding, though. Yeah, that's Blake was good. I like Blake. Yeah, he had a good career, man. Blake was good. Blake was good. Uh, no, no, the Thunder are in good hands, man. Like I said, SGA is good. like that. Uh, we had 37 from SGA. We had 31 from J Dub the other night, and then we had 21 and 14 from Shet. And uh, Gordon Hayward had sent off the bench. He started to come into his own. Josh Giddy didn't have a terrible game because he's been not playing well. So mm. he's going to be the X Factor. If Giddy can. let him shoot, that's sad. Yeah. You're a shooting guard, which is an oxymoron. You can't shoot when you're a shooting guard. It's funny as shit. Well, like I said, if he, if he can not be a liability as a shooter, then Thunder will have a chance. Let's take him out of the starting lineup. Start fucking Dort. Start Gordon Hayward. Dort, Dort already starts. All right, fuck it. Gordon, Gordon Hayward. 
Yeah. Gordon Hayward. Uh, Jane Gordon Hayward also Good. has a health problem. That man has perpetually oh. in the mass unit for whatever reason. But mm. we'll see. See if he can stay healthy for the playoffs. I'm, I'm optimistic. Ain't uh, Shea averaging like two steals too? Yeah, that's why I would say he's arguably the best guard in the league because Luka obviously being the best scorer in the league, but Luka on the defensive end leaves a lot to be desired as Shea leads the league in steals and is also yeah, good on the ball yeah. defensively. So mm-hmm. good defender and averages 30 points a game reliably or – you know, you get the 30, you get more rebounds and assists from Luka, but you get no defense. So that's the trade-off. Like, what do you – it's very similar to, like, kind of like the Luka – I mean, the uh, the Jokic kind of MB thing, what, what you're trading off, where it's like you get more playmaking from Luka, you get more rebounding, yeah. and I think you can get higher volume of scoring. Like, Luka, some nights look like he's going to score fucking, like, 80 points some nights. Where he's just like, yeah, if he, if he just jacked enough shots, where it's like, okay – where Shea is just more going to be more consistent, whereas it's going to be like mm-hmm. he's just walking efficient 30, 5, 6, and 3 steals every night. We just count on it clockwork. Yeah, I feel like that's hilarious that both of these players are so good and they can't check each other. <laughs> that's funny as shit. I mean, it would just awesome. be a bloodbath. It's just yeah. like 50 and 50. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Oh, shit. But I think the Thunder play in a certain way. SGA could score more points if he wanted to, but they they really play team basketball where it's like mm-hmm. he's a walking 30, but he, he is because, like I said, Jalen Williams also had 30, and then Chet also had 20, and then somebody else had 10. You know, like where Luka, it's just going to be Luka hey. and Kyrie in that box score. Speaking of, thank you for walking right into Kyrie, but a lot of niggas ain't going to admit this. But in that playoff series that was Cleveland and Golden State, bruh, Steph could not guard Kyrie. So Kyrie was tearing that nigga the fuck up. Pause. But Steph couldn't. It was looking. I don't remember him crossing that. Oh my God. Like, it's hilarious how some. <laughs> some a lot of. Well, most of the NBA, they can't guard each other. They just gotta score. So, like, he, I mean, so, like, some of these gifted scorers, like, I mean, what, what you gonna do against Kyrie or Steph coming down at you? Or, like, what. Well, there's not any defenders elite enough <laughs> for some of the dynamic. Like, you were talking about KD earlier in places like. Yeah. What, Wimbin Yanama in, like, three years? Who is gonna, like. Who's going who to guard him? Who gonna, like, it's going to be like Chet, one defender. I mean, it's, guard him, it's, almost like, it's almost like, it's almost like, it's almost like Michael Jordan was, who was the defensive stalwart and a scorer at the same time. It's almost like he's from a bygone era and he's like really that great. I mean, he's still got two-way score, score people, scorers and defenders like Kawhi. Clippers are trying to build their team around that. We just talked That's about Shea. It. We talked about, you know, there's some, you know, it's not not a lot. Like, so, we just yeah. said two. <laughs> we just so said Paul two. George. He, they're on the way out. They're <laughs> all leaving. Who's, who's coming? Go. Look, at, right, look, look at him. Look at him. Look. <laughs> talking about Bridges. We got Bridges and uh, okay, okay. Two way a Billy. Trying to think of some more, man. Like, <laughs> like who's the actual star? <laughs> like star level defender, like a two way star. That shit don't even exist no more. It might be Brandon Fair. Miller. It might be Brandon. He could, you know, I think he's got the dog in him to, yeah. to become that type of defender if he commits on that side of the ball. I like Brandon Miller a lot. I, I would like to say he, the piece you build around in Charlotte, like, sorry, LaMelo. I think his, his ankles are too frail. His maturity level is too low. I just, that is just my issue. His defensive effort level is too low. For me to want to invest building my team around LaMelo, like what, I keep him. What is like, of course you probably graded him as like a rookie, but what is LaMelo supposed to be at this point? What was he supposed to be at this point? Franchise guard. Like he's supposed he to be. He was supposed to be Shea. Maybe not. Well, something like that. Yeah, like a star. I'm maybe not 30 points a game. You don't expect him to be like there yet, but like. Yeah, he's he can score. He's very talented. Like everyone's seen the level of talent that Lamelo has. He can get a bucket. Mm-hmm. He can be get a flashy bucket. He can distribute the ball. He can do a lot of exciting things. But is he playing winning basketball consistently enough in terms of like the defensive decision making and things like that? That I'm not sure about. 
And again, um, it's also an availability thing more than anything. Him and Lonzo, both of them, like, I like Lonzo more because Lonzo has always been the defensive brother who actually is a phenomenal defender. And Well, he was healthy and Bull was rock. Yeah, like, and they kind of built things <coughs> around him. I think that really hurt the Bulls' yeah. plan where while they're kind of stuck in basketball hell Like, right now. their small lineup when they was with, when they had Lonzo, Caruso, Zach Levine, uh, DeRozan, and uh, Vucevic, that lineup was deadly, bro. Yeah, I like Lonzo. And he can shoot, shoot the three. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, he's a 3 and D, smart point guard, athletic. I don't think, uh, people didn't like him because he wasn't assertive enough. They were just like, why aren't you getting 30, 30, <coughs> but that's just not the type of player he is. You know no, what I'm saying? he's a way better facilitator than he is a scorer. Yeah, so. It's and like, defender, too. I like Lonzo a lot better because he plays defense. LaMelo yeah. plays no defense, and that is a problem. Because defense is a want. It's just like, you could, you could if you wanted to. That's kind of my issue with all the players who are like, Doormats on defense, like you could, yeah. you could at least be average. You could try a little bit, like you don't, you don't have to just be a cone out there, dog. Yeah, a lot of niggas can't play defense, bro. And, and we we saw a player that we all love get exposed to that because he didn't really have to be accountable for that in Portland. And now when everyone's like, hey, you got to replace Drew Holiday and kind of keep it up, and now everyone's looking at Dame like, hey. What's up that. with this? <laughs> and it's just like this ain't that. no one expected him to be Drew Holiday, but it's like was he always horrible at defense? And it's like yes, Bro, the answer is yes. You have to understand, <laughs> you can't go from defense. That's like going from <clears throat> Marcus Smart to Kyrie Irving. Like you can't expect him to like replace that defense. You got to. He's like a designer car. He's he's <laughs> not a Jeep. He's a designer car. He's not here for the dirty work. He's here to look pretty. Like, that's what he is. And yeah, that's what he had to do in Portland for all those years. So even he said, it's like, it's, I never had to play the role of, like, I yeah. have to stop somebody. That was uh, There was always yeah. another guy for that. And I'm the scorer. I'm the Yeah, money. that's what I'm saving my energy for is to get yeah. these buckets. So it's like. I'm the money. <laughs> like, this, the money don't yeah. do all that. But, yeah, now, they're, they're, like you said, um, just last night, I looked at the box score. Every about two to three games, the Bucks just lose by, like, 35 points. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, there it is. I just checked my phone this morning. Oh, I didn't watch the rest of the game. Oh, it was one of those days for the Bucks. They <laughs> got absolutely obliterated by somebody last night. Mm-hmm. And everyone's healthy. Everyone played. Cool. Yeah. That usually happens to the Lakers. I like the Lakers story is just sad at this point. They're not even elite. Yeah, they're pretty mid this year. They they've got some players. I think the D'Angelo Russell resurgence has been nice. He's he's look good. Fuck that means. He's like, so good. That like, doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Like, it, like when players just get hot, it's like the J.R. Smith thing. Like, he's going to get 30 this game and then fucking 8 the next game. It's not reliable. It's not consistent. It's a flash in the pan. Of course, everybody has a fucking spark every now and then. It's hoops. You go to your local YMCA, there's going to be a nigga that's just hot. He's just, man, he's well, just hot. He's not know, even that good. He's just hot. Well, you know who has been consistent for them? Spencer Dinwiddie. Consistently ass. Consistently ass. That man has been consistently dropping two points in 24 minutes type. Uh, Why are they doing this to LeBron, man? Yeah, that, that was a wild pickup. It's like, oh, that's going to save the season. It's Spencer gonna, Dinwiddie. It's going to work everything out. Spencer Dinwiddie. <laughs> Dinwiddie. Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> oh my god, why are they doing this to LeBron? Why? He's still great. That's that's the point I'm making. He's still great, getting like twenty seven, eight and eight, and AD doing his thing too. But we just got it's not working out, and we should have at least one more star here. LeBron's old. AD's weird. Like so Bronny's gonna save the team. Go ahead and draft Bronny. Bronny should go to the G League, man. Should it's, go to the G League. Yeah, if you can't make the top 60 in one of the worst draft classes we've seen in the past, like, 10 years, like, that's, this drone looks terrible. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, that, sorry. And I've been doing a lot of scouting of a lot of draft classes for a, a little while now. I, I like to go deep into the draft. And this draft, while having some players, I like it, like, good players. But, like, this is the year that I absolutely would not want the number one pick. I'd trade it for it. Like, it's just, it ain't worth nothing. Ain't worth nothing. I, I'm, Alexander Starr. I'm good at six. I'm good at ten. I'm good at just give me a top ten pick. Get somebody. They're talking about Reed Shepard in the top five. They're talking about Rob Dillingham bench players off of. I, 
he's great though. I like Deli Ham, but still, it's just this compared to the last few draft classes. It's balance. It's balance. There's no Anthony Edwards in this class. There's no. Well, with 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 respect to the way the circle of life and balance and stuff is like a dunk contest. Like you got, if you get a, a great year one year, you might get a trash one the next one. This is balance for the Wimby year. So this yeah, 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 the Wimby Super year. Super generational like, talent. <laughs> this is balance. And now it's like nothing. Now. Yeah. Role players. You, 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 need, you need a good role player. A couple years or some shit. Yeah, that's literally, you're right. People yeah. are already doing the mock draft for next year talking about where's Cooper Flag going to go? How bad is this draft class when niggas are talking about where Cooper next, Flag next is going to go? In 2026. <laughs> this is the, the draft of high-level role players, or maybe you you know you get a surprise and hit on somebody and develop them, but there is no Zion, there's no Anthony Edwards, there's no... Where is Omari Bailey at? He probably didn't get drafted. That was before the Omari Bailey. Oh, well, you can look forward to Alexander Sarr, whatever. Let's see how that works out. For somebody, maybe, yeah. yeah. Um, Cody Williams, maybe. Who number one. Who are these people? Um, he's um, Jalen Williams' little brother. He plays at uh, Colorado. Wow. He's a 6'8 wing. Um, people are like Cody Williams. Like I said, Zachary Rissache from France. Again, yeah, nobody knows who these people are. Wow. Reed Shepard is the white boy from Kentucky who can hoop, but he looks like. He's built like Luke Kennard, so everyone's like, I'm I'm not spending the top five pick on, on that. But he's good, though. I like it. I mean, I would take him if you need, like, a role player to help you be good. But top five, if this this draft is this is wild. <laughs> if we're talking about, like, adding role players with your top five pick in this draft. Like, it's not as strong, not strong at the top. But there's, are, there's always going to be stars because even um, – one of the worst draft classes gave us Giannis. So, there's always going to be Jim. <coughs> yeah, you're right. So, you never know. So, you never know. Uh, what that man looks. Uh, yeah. Shogun. Gas. Still gas. Still amazing. Still great. As somebody who doesn't know how to swim, I wasn't that compelled about the, the whole diving sequence. I'm like, I'm not diving in the water. Yeah, I'm not a swimmer either as well. Diving, I just like, like keep diving in the water. Why do you keep diving in the water? What's wrong with the, what's on the land? What's wrong with the boat? Why do you keep getting off the boat? There's nothing wrong. It's a perfectly good boat. But, yeah, still a great show. Um, Shawty husband. I don't know. She wasn't too distraught about her husband. Nah, she wasn't. <laughs> Like she didn't wave, didn't didn't <laughs> scream out, didn't. Well, it seems like wave. he was kind of a dick to her. So, like, seems like every scene we saw with them. That's before, her husband, though. That's potentially about to die. I mean, she didn't seem to like that man that much. So. Wow, <laughs> he went out like a G, though, man. Yeah, it's cool to see the cultural difference because, like I said, he's he's never seen like the samurai honor. So he's just like, let's go get him. We can save him. Let's turn the boat around. And everyone else is like, nah, nigga, this, he's about to get a glorious death. Like he's. Then he didn't really die because he didn't on the screen, so I don't believe he died. Oh, he's super dead. There's no way. Like there's a whole village of people went to go murk him. Amen. I didn't see it happen. I like the way they presented it because like you don't have to see it. It's so obvious that that man was going one on one thousand. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, so he, he's he dead. Got the whole hood on his ass. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like right. him not making it to the boat was his death. Mm-hmm. And then that's why he's like, I'm gonna glow out like a thug, and you know. I thought he was gonna circle coat right there. Like, yeah, that, yeah, I did think that for a second. Is he gonna kill himself? He's like, no, nah, he's gonna get a, a warrior's death. Mm-hmm. He's gonna go out protecting his, his people, going out like with honor. And was, the Brit, you know, white Protestant man was just like, what the, what the hell is this? Y'all, okay. y'all wild. Why don't we go save him? I like the uh, the uh, the relationship between the two captains of the boat. Yeah, that was cool. Look, because yeah, he yeah, saved him. Like, I forgot he saved him in the yeah. episode before, so mm-hmm. he was just like, "Ah, oh, I pay him back for that." You know, he saved my life. I'm not going, not going to do him dirty. He did this wild, crazy thing. I'm gonna give him a chance to at least see if he can survive. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "That's cool, man." We we get some some good character interactions, mm-hmm. different layers. Like I said, intrigue just reminds me very much of Game of Thrones when it was good. Like early Game of Thrones, <laughs> early Game of Thrones, where the show was about people talking in rooms, 
and conversations and you know yeah. political alliances and subterfuge and mis misinformation and disinformation and mm -hmm. you know that's 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 the cool part and all the different factions and clans and mm -hmm. that was cool even like the dudes like are they fighting each other down there I thought like we we're ambushing them and now they they just wrecking each other like what <laughs> what's happening down there <laughs> like we're trying to kill these guys and they just started fighting each other we don't know what's going on like yeah. there's plans within plans and it was very cool. Yeah, um, Shogun on FX, one of the highest rated shows of all time. A lot of shows don't get that honor, but the show is great. Um, I gotta read more up on the, uh, this is based off of real stuff that actually happened too, so I'll read up on that, see how it really went down. <clears throat> All right, speaking of reading, I do want to talk about a little bit of comics. We had another big um, Ultimate comic launch. Mm -hmm. So the first one was Ultimate Spider-Man, okay. which um, for context, the um, Amazing Spider-Man book has been awful. It's been terrible. I love Zeb Wells as a writer, but I don't know what the fuck is going on in Marvel. It. Um, it started with Peter Parker having no memory of some like weird disaster that happened, and this is the one where the storyline where Mary Jane got trapped in another dimension with some other nigga and had some kids with this dude okay. and then came back and had like step kids and was just like yeah we're over Peter and everybody was just like what the fuck is this and then they did this weird gang war thing that they're doing now which is like a whole thing where spider mans like a background character to some boring ass like tombstone gang war bullshit and everyone's just like where's Spider-Man in this story and he's just in the background like hey guys just cut it I don't know cut it out and he's just like what is Amazing spider so Needless to say, people are very down on Amazing Spider-Man. So we finally got a new version of the Ultimate Universe started by Jonathan Hickman, the man who revitalized X-Men and did Krakoa, House of X, did Secret Wars, the original one that they're building the MCU off of right now. Hickman, the man in comics. So they got him to do Ultimate Spider-Man, which is crazy. So he did a version of, in a fresh universe where there are no superheroes, and then he gets to start over and do the ultimate line again. So, Ultimate Spider-Man, so far, very successful. The next one has been Ultimate Black Panther. Good start to that. That's been good. And now, today, we finally had the long-awaited, or yesterday, Ultimate X-Men. Mm -hmm. This book rocks. It's Peach Momoko. She is a writer and artist who has a very manga-like style. It's very anime, manga, very, very Asian kind of inspired art style. So, she's known for doing things that are tr very different and trippy, and that's exactly what I wanted. Because Krakoa, as I talk about all the time, my favorite era of X-Men is ending. A very weird, ambitious era. We're going back to basics. We're going to go back to mansion basic stuff soon for MCU purposes. I have very mixed feelings about that. But we're going back to basics in the normal X-Men line. So now, perfect opportunity for the Ultimate line to do something very weird. And we're doing something very weird with Ultimate X-Men. People saying it's like Junji Ito, kind of like Spiral Uzumaki kind of vibe to it, like a manga horror vibe. Mm -hmm. It's all about armor, and she's the main character, so we're following armor and dealing with just some weird, very manga-like first chapter. And I just want to say how much I appreciate having the Ultimate line back to have an alternative to the main comics when they get mids. <laughs> like, like the alternative started struggling. I need a line where Marvel's not afraid to be weird and ambitious. Mm -hmm. Like for Ultimate Spider-Man, for example, Uncle Ben is alive in this continuity. That changes things up. Peter Parker is older and already has kids and get his powers way later in life. He's like, but you know, in his 30s or 40s and gets his powers with like grown kids and things like that. So it changes things and allows them to tell new stories. We really needed that in Marvel. So I just want to say shout out to the Ultimate line right now and how weird and different it's been. And I hope to see it uh, continue. Um, <clears throat> so, what are the most compelling things about it? That they can just tell these new stories that are just disconnected from continuity where they don't have to play it well, safe. Well, give me a story that they had. For the ultimate one? Yeah. 
Well, like I was saying, Ultimate Spider-Man, like they just started, so all of them are new and they'll have had one or two chapters, but like the fact that Uncle Ben is alive gives it a whole new dynamic. He works for the Daily Bugle. Peter has two kids and Mary Jane, he's just older. So he's learning to be Spider-Man, but he sucks at it. Like he sucks, cause it's not like, he just basically the maker, he found like information that tells him like, hey, somebody changed your life. You were supposed to get bit by the spider, but somebody purposely made it didn't happen. So if you want to be a superhero, you can do that now. Mm-hmm. So he is much later in life. So like the first battle he has is like with the shocker. And it's just like, oh, and the shocker just mops that man. Cause he has no experience being, it's like, I barely know how my powers work. I'm just out here trying to, just, he tries to talk to him like, hey man, I don't want to fight. Let me just, you, you want to stop doing crime? And he's like, oh yeah, nah, bitch. And he just like, he, he's, 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 yeah, he's gullible. And it's just a different take on, on Peter Parker. Like, he's like an older dude. Then he has to come home and hide it from his kids. And it's, it's different stuff they can tell with the story now. Now it's like, is Uncle Ben going to die again? Is, you know, is what, wh- where are we going with this? We have a new Green Goblin with a secret identity. There's, they can just tell some different stories, and that's what's needed, some refreshing, where they always want to keep Peter young and single in the comics, in the main line. It's just like, let's finally have people wanted, this is what people always really wanted, like Spider-Man who's grown older and developed and later in life and actually is allowed to have kids and a family, doesn't always have to have his happiness snatched by the literal devil, and fucking, uh, yeah, they've done some wild stuff with Spider-Man, but. So just having like a manga X-Men line and it's having the first issue not show any of the X-Men other than armor and not have really anything to do is like maybe the Shadow King, maybe. I don't even know what the hell the entity that is haunting her is and it's like, it's part of the mystery, but really, really cool to see that since we're gonna lose our, our very cool Krakoa stories very soon. We're at the end of the end of the line for Krakoa. So we're, we're gonna end that, unfortunately. Okay. Well. <clears throat> that was good while it lasted. Like a lot of things. Yeah, like I said, um, mixed feelings because, like I said, it was great at its height, but then some of the books were dragging. Like some of the books after, especially after Hickman left, Jerry Duggan's mainline X Men book, it's mids. It's the definition of mids. Like it's never bad, but it's never good. I don't know what his writing is. It's so flat to me, and it, you. The mainline X Men book has to be good. It's the the main one, the, the book that says X Men, <laughs> yeah. and not like an offshoot has to be strong. And if that's not strong, it's going to be hard to keep up the line as a whole. So it was good. And we still have two two good books rolling at the end of Krakoa, but the problem is it's like six books gone, and it's just like that's not a you know two out of six. Maybe it's time for the era to end if so many of the books are going to be lackluster, and they're just going to kind of. Well, I don't want it to end with a whimper. Let's just try to end it on a high night, a high note, and do do some some cool storytelling. So we'll right. uh, do you have any more notes or revelations or inquiries or any uh, news on Pokemon Z today? Uh, no, no new news. I haven't uh, caught up on it, but like I said, I know we're going to be doing Gen 6 again, so. Yeah, I did see that we're getting a lot of uh, Pokemon coming back. Onyx coming back, Steelix coming back. I'm excited about that because I'm a Steelix fan. Um, and there was some more jumps like Wizcash. Uh, what else is on there? I think Pullaby. Yeah. I'll, I hope they add more Pokemon to it because sure. me myself, I, li- I like a certain variety of Pokemon. I just like like a lot of those games. What was the recent game that I played that only had like a hundred jumps on it? And it was the uh, yeah, I think it was Brilliant Diamond. Yeah, that's because it was a remake to you know like an older game. They wanted to keep it faithful, but, but I'm sure this is gonna be but like. Listen, it was like game. a hundred Pokemon, and it was all the jumps I didn't like. So I had a hard time playing that jump, bro. That shit was annoying. But yeah, uh, yeah, we still, you know, still got some time before they come out with it. It's look, it's look like that. No, it's definitely, um, like I said, it's going to be a Legends game. So I have faith we're going to get Mega Evolutions back. So that's going to be interesting to see what they yeah, do with that mechanic again. Yeah. 
and Gen Six is a good generation. Like I like I like Gen Six. Like, I just excited that it's a Legends game, and I just hope they give us something closer to what the um, the combat system is for a regular Pokemon battle system. Yeah, I'm cool. Yep. All right. Oh. What else we got? Uh, that was about it. I think we hit everything. I didn't look at, um, looks at, see, it looks like we have a uptake in Articunos in VGC right now. There you go. There's a, um, I think it was the one in Germany, the regional. It looks like there was an Articuno snow team that was running around with, um, um, Aurora Vale, Nine Tails, the Lowland Nine Tails. Oh, regular that, Articuno? Yeah, it's regular OG Articuno with a Terra Ice Blizzard Spam with the Aurora, <laughs> with the Aurora Vale, um, Alola Nine Tails. With the Stabiana. With the Stabiana, Nova. Stabiana. Yeah, so like I said, um, I haven't seen it um, used at all till then, but apparently it's everywhere now. People are picking up this team and this combination of core and building teams around the Blizzard Spam now. Is something that wasn't a running around regulation up before this. So the, the 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 European players are pulling out some some new strategies. Yeah, I, I saw some, what was it, something weird. I saw um, the more recent tournament. I saw somebody had a, uh, of course they coming out there with more Clefairies. Uh, I look for the more like when I see the tournament. Of course you're going to see the. The flutter mains. Of course, you're gonna see the Urshifus. Either way, of course, you're gonna see even the uh, Farigarath sometimes when they do a trick room set. But I always try to look for the people who want to use stuff that's like out of the box, out of the ordinary. And um, <clears throat> the Amoongus has been out there. I mean, I could you imagine you're you're, you're at a like tournament of the best. Pokemon trainers in the world and you get hit with a sport. Like, that would be super fucking annoying. I mean, that's what happened. That's why Amoongus has been a world champion Pokemon. That would blow the shit out of me. Crazy good. It's still a staple of VGC. That's why safety goggles is an item that is common. Because mm -hmm. the sport and Amoongus, like, and if you don't account for it, you will lose the game. Because, like, you'll be asleep while that team's beating your ass. And mm -hmm. that's the surefire way to lose a game is to not be prepared for an Amoongus. Mm -hmm. Like, straight up. That's why I say that's why I always call them an S tier Pokemon. Because if you don't come prepared for that, you will lose. Yeah. Like, you will lose if your team's not constructed to be able to defend against that in some way. So, who else is on the snow set with the Articuno? Um, mainly the uh, Alolan uh, Nine Tails is what you need mm -hmm. to set the snow. It's going to be the best snow setter because Obama snow is terrible. Nice. And you want the Alolan Nine Tails, and you get the fairy stab on that, so you can get dazzling gleams and stuff. Set the Aurora Veil, you can double Blizzard spam. So that is the partner right now. Um, looks like maybe Landorus and some other things that might be good in that combination, but mm -hmm. I think just the Ice Core using that weather and. Pokemon that can benefit in that weather condition is going to be interesting. Yeah, like um, like I said, I haven't been online too much since then, so I'm, I'm I think my team can handle snow pretty well, but it's going to be interesting to see that. Yeah, I want to see how I can counter some of these strategies and maybe I'll build an ice team myself. Okay. I'm okay. You about to build an ice team. That's alright. Alright, everyone. Thank you for joining us on a new episode of Channel Orange. I've been your host. Don't get a guy to be in the mobile. I've been here with Paco Poppy and in the background playing Hell Divers too. Dad Daddy Don. Tell us when you like them. Tell us when you love them. Leave a like. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. You know about some versions coming up. It's coming up soon. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Tell us when you love them. Gang. Yeah.